This is Julia Whitup, and we have with us today uh, Adrian Hernandez, and he's going to talk about lucid dreaming. So tell us what, what is lucid dreaming? Well, lucid dreaming is when you are aware that you're dreaming during a dream. Um, it actually happens pretty often to a lot of people, um, and there's a way that you can actually intentionally induce it um which is what i'm going to be teaching you today great let's let's hear i've actually induced one myself but i'd like to hear how you do it <laughs> maybe we can compare some notes so. okay yeah so i'll start from the beginning um you know the first most important uh fundamental aspect of lucid dreaming is knowing whether you are awake or asleep so uh, you actually don't know when you're dreaming, just like you wouldn't know right now if you're dreaming. You don't know at any point if you're dreaming if you don't have a method for discerning the difference. Um, and that method is commonly called a, uh, a reality check. Mm -hmm. So reality check is basically anything that, that you can do that takes a, a fair level of skill or it's a bit difficult. Um, something that takes some difficulty to do in your waking uh, waking realm is going to be impossible to do in a dream. So these reality checks, it's basically uh, your, you know, the pinch you give yourself to see if you're, you're awake or sleeping, as they say, I don't know if you've heard of that, but uh, I don't uh, know. so the way you develop this uh, reality check is, you know, you, it takes as long as it does to to form as it does to form a persistent habit. So say something like mine, the one that I use is a, it's like a bird call that I do with my lips. It goes something like this. I don't know if you can hear it. It goes. Oh yeah, we can hear it. Okay. So I do that. I do that so often that I even do it out of habit in my dreams. Okay. It's funny because I've been doing that for so long and and I remember times in the past where I haven't been able to do it and I realized that those were times that I was actually dreaming. Uh but anyway, you can't do it. You must be dreaming. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, and I do a number of them. It's just little habits or little quirks, you know, that that take a little bit of skill or something, you know, are a little bit difficult. You won't be able to do it in a dream. And that's how you will be able to tell if you're dreaming or not. So it's not about becoming aware in the middle of a dream in process. It's more about staying aware through the process of falling asleep and entering the dream phase of sleep. Um, so your, your reality check, as important as it is, is not, you know, is not going to be what in induces a lucid dream. It'll just um, make you lucid, though. Right. It, it will. It will just help you. It will help you to identify whether you are asleep and dreaming, or whether you are. Well, I'm sorry. Well, you, whether you are aware and dreaming, or awake and aware. So, what I um, do is get myself into the habit of saying, "Am I dreaming?" And then looking at everything to see if anything wasn't right. And mm -hmm. one night I was do did that, and I noticed that. It had snowed. I was looking out my window and I noticed it had snowed during the night. And I knew that it was August. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I must be dreaming because it couldn't have snowed in August. And then I yeah. knew that the trees that were between my house and the neighbor's house were gone. They weren't okay. there. So I thought, okay, I am dreaming. So you kind of discovered, okay, yeah, and that's really rare for that to happen without it causing you to wake up, um, you know, too much excitement, you know, or, or, you know, too much awareness in the dream state will actually cause you to wake up. So that's a rare experience. I'm glad you, you mentioned that to me because I, uh, I haven't, I haven't heard that too much. Uh, you know, the other people... thing I'll try to do is fly like Superman. Yeah, flying is fun. <laughs> if you can fly, you're definitely dreaming. <laughs> I have I have a neat story about flying in, in uh, your dreams. If uh, if we finish and have time, I'll I'll, uh, I'll tell it to you. Okay, so, go ahead with you. Yeah, move, moving on. So um, the way you induce a lucid dream is that you 
trick your brain into thinking your body is asleep. And you have to do this when you're not actually in need of rest because you will just pass out. But what you'll want to do is, you know, do your reality check as always, you know, throughout the day, do it as many times as possible. You know, if you have to set a, set a, set a timer so that you remind yourself to do it and it becomes a, a persistent habit. Um, you know, affirm to yourself, as you said, am I dreaming? Do your reality check. If you can do it, tell yourself, I am awake. And if you can't do it, tell yourself accordingly, you know, you are asleep. I'm asleep. Um, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to lay down and get meditated or relaxed. Close your eyes. Be in the most comfortable position that you can possibly be in. And from that moment on, don't move or respond to any kind of stimulation, any kind of itches or urges to roll over or any kind of discomfort. Because what that is, is your brain doing a check of its own. It does these tests to see if the body is, is sedated before it can begin the dream phase. And the reason it does this is so you don't get up and start acting out your dreams and possibly hurt yourself. Um, so it has to, it has to sedate, your, your brain has to sedate your body in order to begin the dream phase. And in order for you to trick your brain, you have to not respond to any of those stimulus or those, those checks, like the itches, you know, and you'll notice anytime you're about to fall asleep, there's always this sudden urge to roll over or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and if you, if you're well rested, which I recommend getting a full night's rest, you know, waking up early, go to bed early and waking up like two hours before your average, uh, you know, nightly rest time. So let's say you wake up early, uh, get up for about 15 minutes, you know, that time will vary from person to person, lay back down, get in the comfortable position, like I said, and don't respond to any of the stimuli. What will happen is you'll start to experience kind of a stream of consciousness. It's somewhat psychedelic, um, a lot of just random, you know, shapes and images and, you know, sounds just running through your head. That alone is a very, very awesome experience. Um, and it's very difficult to break through into the dream phase after this point uh, with, with waking awareness because uh, normally you just pass out because it's so, it's so calming, I want to I say. But hopefully you can, you, know, you can share that experience and let me know. Uh, eventually what happens is that stream of consciousness kind of organizes itself into a, into a dream. Mm -hmm. And you know, to which if you've never done it before, you won't really recognize it. It'll kind of feel like it's just thoughts running through your head. Like it's a very vivid thought, but then you realize you'll be in a dream. And, you know, when you're novice, it's, it's uh, really difficult to control things to make things happen. Um, at first it's kind of like, you're just an observer, but you're aware you're dreaming and you have to continue to do your reality checks, even while you're dreaming and telling yourself that you're asleep. Otherwise you slip into, you slip out of dream lucidity and into a normal. Yeah, normal sleep pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's basically it. Some you know some really interesting things that you can you can do in your dreams is uh, you know talk to yourself in the mirror. I'll probably just leave it right there because if you know if you can get lucid and talk to yourself in the mirror, it's a very 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 weird uh, intimate experience with almost speaking to a side of you that you're normally you normally don't have access to. You know, and of course, flying, uh, flying is incredible. I mean, I feel like everybody shares that, you know, that dream to fly. Um, oh, yeah, I love flying. <laughs> I actually have developed and, and gotten better at flying over time. When I was a child, I used to have to do kind of this bicycle kick to, to kind of jump, double jump and triple jump into the air. And I oh. wouldn't be able to get very high. And uh, I would come down you know, I'd touch the ground. I would have to touch the ground before I could start back up again. I'd do that jumping, like quick jumps in the air to get higher and higher. And eventually it was less jumps to get higher. And, you know, over time I got better at it. And now I can lay down and just look in any direction I want to go. And once I actually got really good at it, at flying, I would fly over my dreamscape and look down and recognize all the places where I've had dreams in the past. For my oh. entire for my entire life, I, so I have this city in my dreams, where all my dreams happen, where nightmares occur, where you know that's that's another reason I think this is really important is because you know, 
you can eliminate nightmares, you know what I mean? Which is a big thing for some people, especially, especially people who base their dreams on real, you know, on entirely on reality, you know, is a great tendency to, to turn into a nightmare. So it's better to be in control of your dreams so you don't have to experience nightmares and maybe <laughs> you, can, you can change the direction of your dreams instead of making your, re or letting your reality dictate your dreams, you can let your dreams be part of your reality, you know, you, they say uh, dream time is so different, um, which I've also experienced that too, you know, you, you're only in, you're only in the dream phase for, you know, a matter of minutes, but when you're dreaming, it feels like days, it could be days you're dreaming, and in those days, you can be productive and finish a project in your dream, and then when you wake up, now you have the blueprints to make it real, you know, Mm -hmm. and I, think, I think that's the basis of sayings such as follow your dreams, chase your dreams, make your dreams come true. You know, maybe there's some ancient knowledge there or something. I don't, I, I think you can take that quite literally, especially after you've learned to how to lucid dream and utilize this. So, I mean, but yeah, it's simply that, I mean, it's, it's, it's simply put tricking your brain into thinking your body is asleep will will propel you into a, a lucid dream. But getting through that, getting through that stream of consciousness where everything kind of goes crazy and it's, it's not really any organized thought or, or images uh, is also very difficult. And that part will probably take, you know, some time, some practice to get through. Um, when I realized that I was actually lucid dreaming, when I, when I finally understood which, what was going on, which was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, <laughs> it all of a sudden became difficult for me to get past that point. So maybe just being consciously aware of what I was doing actually complicated, the, complicated it for me. And I, I've since experienced the most trouble getting through that phase where, you know, the, the stream of consciousness of, of, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, it's like a kaleidoscope, you know, it's a psychedelic yeah. experience. Yeah. Mm. Tell us some of the experiences you've had lucid dreaming. So uh, once I've kind of got a handle on it, uh, I wanted to learn a new superpower per se, a uh -huh. new skill. And uh, so I focused on making fire with my hands. And it's really hard to even remember to do it once you get in, in a dream. You know, your brain doesn't quite work the same way, so you just don't remember things like that. But when I, when I finally was able to put some time into it, I focused on making fire with my hands and I actually felt heat. Maybe maybe I was creating heat on my hands, like in my bed, in, in the physical realm or something, but I could feel heat in my hands. And so I was trying to make this flame and focusing on it. And next thing you know, um, something blew up in front of me. And suddenly there's a hole where there used to be like a wall or something. And uh, so what I've been wanting to do is go back to that place in my dream and see if it's still, if it's still altered, if it was left that way, because... Uh, I should add another really, really interesting thing as I mentioned about this city in my dreams is uh, things that change in it kind of tend to stay that way. So when wow. I do revisit, yeah, it's, it's a more, so when you, you know, went back, that hole might still be there, might still be there. And I, I don't know yet, but, but, you know, obviously it's everything. It's, it's a creation of the mind. So, you know, it's probably still there. It's probably the way that I want to remember it or, you know, but I also have people in my dreams that have grown older as I've grown older. Um, you know, there's this house that I like to visit and it's like an abandoned house where all these, all these vagabond kids hang out and party all day. It's always, it's always nighttime inside this house. And I've visited it from time to time, wound up in this place. You know, what we call like a reoccurring dream is probably just returning to this place in your dreamscape, you know, and, and these kids have gotten older and the most recent, time that I've seen them, they've, they're as old as I am now, and they're still doing the same thing in my dreams. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's really, it's really weird. It really kind of, you know. Do you ever ask them about it? Um, I, I have talked to them, but I, I don't, uh, like I said, it's really hard to remember any questions I might have, like, in the middle of a dream. So, it's, it, you know, a lot of it is, is really just being an observer, you know, trying to remember to, to go there and and ask somebody or talk to them would be would be a little bit more difficult. It's more like once I get there, I know what to do. I know what I want to do. But thinking about what I want to do before I'm actually dreaming is, thinking, is kind of wild. 
Well, yeah. thinking about things might be kind of hard. Just yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So once I, yeah, once I, once I'm there, I know exactly what I want to do and I go do that. It's just distracting, you know? So maybe, maybe with more skill, I can, I can be a little bit more specific about how I dream. And I, I think that's, a, that's eventually where, our, where I'll get, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing what it does to your creativity, you know, as far as nightmares, I think that's probably one of the biggest things right there is eliminating nightmares. You know, and it kind of, you know, once you once you start moving into into other things such as I don't know if you all are open to this, but uh, astral projection, you know, it kind of it kind of puts the what do I say I, I've I've gained a lot of insight as to what life and death is and spirit. You know, I've unlocked a lot of creativity, uh, been able, you know, been more open minded and thus been able to be almost like a receptor for what of what other people people's intentions are you know or like I, I i get stronger vibes from people i feel more connected to my reality more in control of it um wow. you know, crazy crazy things manifest like a lot easier now you know things that i things that i think of and i tell myself i i want i need this in my life and this is how i'm gonna mm-hmm. acquire it and this is what you know and and it just kind of happens from there so and I really strongly believe it. I believe it has a lot to do with lucid dreaming, being in control of your dreams. Like I said, you know, follow your dreams, chase your dreams. Like there's got to be some kind of real knowledge there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that meant sounds meant quite specifically. You know, so. sounds very cool. Do you have a? Are you part of a dream group that meets or anything like that? No, actually, I uh, I haven't become a part of a group, but I do. Um, I do give lessons on Simbi. Where I believe, where I believe we met. Yes, I believe that's where we met. Yes. Yeah, Simbi is really awesome, Um, especially because I don't, I don't run into too many people that are open to this topic of discussion in in my immediate life, you know, in my my environment. So, being on Simbi has really connected me with people who actually take an interest. So I'm not just I'm not just wasting my breath saying these things. I I feel like. (laughs) You know, I feel like it's really important for people to do. And I think it's, I think it's a natural function that we are supposed to, uh, is supposed to, you know, take advantage of and learn from our dreams, learn about ourselves. Like I said, talk, talk to the mirror. If you ever get a chance, talk to yourself in the mirror. And it's one of the most incredible, incredible experiences uh, to be able to talk to yourself in a way, you know, that as if you were someone else talking to yourself you know and wow, uh, that's kind of interesting maybe you could ask yourself why do i do this or that <laughs> exactly 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 and you get some really really weird answers you know sometimes they're pretty cryptic but <laughs> but <laughs> like yeah, how, so. why do i smoke maybe would be a good one for smoke exactly. oh well absolutely absolutely if if people have you know habits that they want to get rid of you know dream about it go to you know go go and what would I say? I guess it's a, it's a really interpersonal experience, your dreams, because it is it is a it is your dreamscape. It's whatever your mind creates, and it's a it's like a place in your mind that you go to almost every night. Uh, you know, so you can learn a lot about yourself. And and you know, uh, frankly, I've learned a lot about myself through the nightmares I used to have as a child. I can look back when I'm flying over my city and recognize places where I know I don't want to go, and and now in hindsight, I know why I don't want to go there. I know what I don't want to experience. I know how to recognize those things. So in my waking life, I, I can recognize those things and make healthier decisions as far as, you know, what kind of people I surround myself with, uh, what, what places I go, you know, things that you're doing that, that, you know, ultimately contribute to habits that you have. So, mm-hmm. Or self-destructive um, patterns you might have. Exactly. And of which I had many, <laughs> of which I had many, up in, you know. And this was this was a great part of my development towards getting you know getting to a better place within myself and you know and feeling more confident. You know, I I, I guess that when I first when I first realized that I was lucid dreaming that there this was actually a thing and you know I I started understanding it. Like I guess I got kind of like a a little dose of confidence too to to learn that I discovered this new part of myself, something that I'm able to do that everybody's able to do. It's like it's like a limb. Imagine having a limb that you don't use your entire life. <laughs> no, you life. had. Exactly. And, and I feel like it's so powerful. I just want to share it with everybody. And I want to let them know that, you know, they can mm-hmm. 
do this because it it's so much more than just controlling your dreams you know it changes your life it really does change your life mm -hmm. okay well thank you so much for being with us today yeah thank you for your time and if anybody wants to get a hold of you they can find you at simbi.com right dot com mm -hmm. adrian S hernandez simbi.com mm -hmm. that's where i met adrian and uh we'll maybe have you on again another time i would love that that'd be awesome okay <laughs>